Hi, this is uh, Matthew Robert Payne, and uh, this is uh, today's uh, teaching. Uh, we're going to uh, continue with Corinthians, and uh, this is uh, this is going to be a teaching based on uh, Paul. Paul uh, getting uh, very real uh, with his readers, uh, and uh, uh, I remember one time. Uh, this is Paul talking about uh, being an apostle and uh, I remember one time we we're meeting with a couple of uh, Chinese uh, believers me and another friend when I actually had a friend and uh, both of us were talking to this couple of uh, Chinese Christians uh, at a cafe uh, near my house and I don't know, me or my friend mentioned the word apostles. And uh, one of the Chinese uh, guys were provoked uh, into saying, you, you Westerners uh, throw around that word apostle like it's nothing. And uh, you really, uh, uh, you, you don't understand in China, uh, if you're called uh, to be an apostle, that means uh, you've got a death sentence on your life. And uh, if you're called into a position uh, to lead the church like an apostle, it means you're actually going to be a martyr. You're, you're, you're actually going to be uh, martyred for your faith. And uh, uh, all of the apostles uh, in the Chinese church uh, get martyred uh, because uh, they're so important to the church that the authorities... Uh, chase them down, seek them out, and uh, kill them. And uh, when I heard that, it really uh, uh, brought, brought some uh, holy uh, fear uh, into me, and uh, I recognised uh, the office to be more than something some Westerner uh, calls himself. And uh, so I'm very... Uh, I, I've uh, had... Uh, people uh, prophesy uh, over me and say that I've gotten a calling of an apostle. And uh, I often uh, say uh, to uh, people that are close to me, I'm apostolic. And what I mean by that is that um, I can function in uh, uh, pretty much uh, four of the uh, five offices. I can uh, function as a prophet. I can function as an evangelist. I can function, have a pastoral uh, function, and I can have a teaching function. I'm strongest uh, in my teaching ability, uh, but I'm strongly prophetic, and many of my books are prophetic. Um, but uh, I do uh, share Jesus with uh, nearly everyone I meet, uh, so I'm highly evan evangelistic. I ran a Facebook group, at one stage that uh, grew to have uh, 15,000 people. I was like pastoring a church at the time. It was a very active group. There was a lot of interaction uh, between the uh, members. There was about 40 or 50 posts every day. And uh, we had uh, 10 people as admins and uh, you had to have your post approved. And uh, and uh, it was a very active uh, uh ministry and uh and uh it was like a church that i was pastoring for a time so i have uh had like an apostolic uh call on my life but it's not something uh, that i come forth with uh, you could have uh, uh read quite a number of my books or you could have watched a lot of uh, videos of mine and never heard me mention anything like that i hold uh, the office of apostle a uh, very high uh, in my regard and uh, since i uh, talk to those uh, chinese uh, i have this uh, very healthy uh, respect uh, for the office i, I tend not to really uh, respect uh, people uh, that call themselves apostle or they've got uh, the word apostle such and such on their Facebook uh, name, uh, I tend to uh, respect people that the Holy Spirit 
uh, tells me uh, that they're an apostle rather than uh, people who are telling the whole world that that's what they are. And that's just a personal thing with me, I, I think. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, reveals the anointing of a person to me. And uh, I've met uh, three apostles in the flesh, and uh, they were all mighty men of God. Two of two apostles that I met in the flesh, one of them uh, told me that he never sins and uh, he's conquered sin and uh, taught uh, me that uh, you can take every thought captive and uh, to the obedience of Scripture and uh, you can decide to sin or not and sin is a choice and he chooses not to sin. And the other apostle when he was asked, does he sin? I wasn't there at the time, but when he was asked, does he ever sin? He says, sometimes and little ones, uh, very, not very often and little ones. Uh, in other words, uh, from time to time, uh, he he may do a little sin. He may get offended at something someone says or something. I don't know. Uh, I didn't hear what he said the little sins were, but Two out of three apostles that I've met have basically got a sin-free life. And uh, and both apostles, uh, both of those apostles have a, a Bible that's full of underlines and full of highlights and full of uh, scripture references that have been written in uh, the margin. And uh, one of the apostles I met uh, said that he can only... Uh, keep each Bible for three to four years because he wears them out. And uh, so after three years, he'd have another blank Bible and he'd have to start highlighting and marking up uh, that new Bible. Uh, his Bible is a really good reference because anywhere on any of the pages, uh, there's references to other scriptures and uh, he could uh, get inspired by the Holy Spirit to start with one scripture, but uh, as he's preaching on that one scripture, he could go to the other scriptures that are referenced and it could be a whole message for him. So we're going to uh, read uh, here. I'll use that as an introduction. We're going to read here what uh, Paul's experience was as a prophet, uh, as, as an apostle. Uh, this is what he experienced. And, uh, this is certainly uh, not the life of many uh, Western modern day prophets, uh, but uh, this is what he experienced. Uh, so it's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, uh, you are already full. You are already rich. You've reigned as kings without us. And indeed, I wish you did reign, that we may also reign with you. In other words, he's talking to people who think they're pretty good. And uh, Paul says, uh, uh, you've arrived, but we haven't arrived. Uh, verse 9, for I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death, for we have been made a spectacle to the world both to angels and to men. Um, so I think uh, when Paul was teaching in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, where he said not many noble are called, but God calls the weak and uh, the base and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the people with problems into the ministry, I think he, he was uh, talking about himself there. Um, and uh, here's some characteristics of uh, Paul's life as an apostle. He was uh, he was last in the procession. Uh, he was condemned to death. Uh, he he like the Chinese apostle had uh, a, a martyr's life that uh, he uh, he uh, with his calling he he fully realized that he was condemned to death but we have been made a spectacle to the world. So they they look like a fool uh, to the world. They they seem foolish, both to angels and to men. Um, so even uh, they've been made look like a fool uh, to angels and to men. Uh, they've been made a spectacle. Um, so how many of 
how many of uh, the modern day apostles like uh, I think for a moment uh, of uh, think for a moment of uh, people that you know that uh, they're recognized apostles uh, how many of them uh, are considered last how many of them are considered uh, not worthy how many of them uh, are, are made to uh, look like fools how how many uh, of them have has their ministry uh, and what they teach made them seem like they're a fool uh, before angels and men. Um, so Paul was different. Paul was uh, set apart. He was called uh, to be an apostle. Uh, but uh, this is what he got. This is uh, the treatment that he got. Uh, verse 10, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonoured. Uh, so that was Paul's um, experience. And uh, this is uh, him writing uh, by the unction of the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit uh, imbu imbuing him. This is the Holy Spirit uh, guiding his hand as he's writing this letter to the Corinthians. And he's saying, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonoured. Um, Paul uh, wrote quite a, a bit about uh, that uh, the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. He also write, uh, wrote that the wisdom of men is foolishness to God. Uh, so uh, the takeaway uh, from that is that uh, if uh, you uh, speak uh, with the wisdom of God, uh, that a carnal Christian men, uh, ordinary men, uh, ordinary Christians uh, will consider you to be a fool if you uh, speak uh, with uh, the uh, wisdom of God, if you uh, come out with uh, revelations of God, if you're speaking forth uh, from revelations, many uh, carnal men, many uh, normal Christian men who walk in the flesh uh, will consider what you're saying foolish uh, because uh, the revelation of God will argue, will make a different point, will be controversial uh, compared to what you believe as a normal Christian, as a fleshy Christian, uh, as a Christian that's been brought up with man's words and man's doctrines. And uh, so when you speak forth uh, with revelation, uh, you'll uh, be considered a fool. And uh, I remember uh, one of these apostles, uh, my, my father came home one day and he said, uh, Mutu was in the name of the apostle. He said, Mutu said something today to me that every father uh, would be pleased to hear. And uh, my mother and I said, what did he say? And he says, I don't want to say it. Uh, Matthew uh, will uh, get puffed up uh, if I say it. And my mother said, you can't say that and then not say it. You, you've got to say it now. And he said, um, uh, Mutu was hearing uh, me speak and uh, he turned to my father and the people uh, that uh, were listening to him. He said, you know, Matthew and the Holy Spirit uh, fly together like that. And uh, he put uh, both of his hands together and made them uh, zip through the air. And uh, he said, uh, my father asked him, uh, what does that mean? He says, in my 20 years of ministry, I've never seen anyone closer to the Holy Spirit uh, than Matthew. Matthew uh, walks with the Holy Spirit. And uh, he, uh, because uh, Matthew, 80% uh, of uh, what uh, Matthew says is the Holy Spirit speaking. And Matthew is not even aware that the Holy Spirit is speaking through him. He's He's got no awareness that the Holy Spirit 
uh, is always speaking through him, but he, I perceive that 80% of what comes out of Matthew's uh, mouth is the Holy Spirit speaking. And uh, he said, uh, Bob, your son would be considered a fool and many people uh, would consider him a fool. And uh, my father said, yes, that's true. He said, that's because the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. And uh, so Matthew would remain uh, without many friends and without uh, many people that respect him because most people would uh, consider him a fool uh, because he's so full of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And uh, my brother and my father uh, believed that and came home and told us. And uh, that's uh, what uh, the Apostle Paul is uh, saying here. Uh, he's he's saying uh, that uh, he's, he's uh, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. So uh, the wise in Christ are more carnal and uh, and more uh, fleshy, and uh, they've got a good reputation with the Christians. Uh, we are weak because uh, 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 the Lord calls the weak and uh, the uh, the uh, untrained and the foolish. Uh, and uh, Paul was saying, we are weak, but you are strong. Uh, you are distinguished. Uh, you've got a good reputation, but we are dishonored. Uh, so that was the life uh, that uh, Paul experienced as an apostle. He's not here lying. Uh, Paul isn't uh, writing this letter to the Corinthians lying. He's not saying a mistruth. He's not trying to... Uh, get their sympathy uh, by saying that he's uh, uh, considered at the end that he comes last as the procession uh, of a uh, people comes forth. Uh, he's in, in the last part of it. Uh, he's not saying that uh, he's condemned uh, to death uh, and, and lying about it. He was actually killed and 11 out of 12 uh, disciples, apostles, uh, were were uh, crucified, were were put to death. Uh, that uh, the true apostle had, uh, in those days, had had the sentence of death martyrdom uh, over them. Uh, that was part of their calling that uh, they were going to be killed. Uh, so, uh, so the apostle Paul is saying, "You've got an easy life. Everything's uh, happening for you, uh, but for us apostles." Uh, things are different. Verse 11, to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst. We're poorly clothed, beaten and homeless. Uh, so uh, is, this, uh, is this the lifestyle of that uh, current day apostles are living? Uh, uh, do you know uh, current day apostles who hunger and thirst? They do in China. Uh, and they're poorly clothed in China. They're beaten and homeless in China. Uh, and the apostles there uh, could possibly live without a house and have to rely on the supernatural uh, food to be fed. Uh, they're poorly clothed. They, they are, are poor. Uh, they don't have a lot of wealth. Uh, they they live on the uh, 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 on the giving of uh, the people that they minister to. Uh, but uh, in Paul's uh, day, that he actually he had times uh, where he hungered and thirsted, uh, where uh, he was actually hungry and thirsted. And not many uh, people are dressed in Arma Armani 2 and 3 and 5 and $10,000 suits these days that the apostles wear not many of them are hungering and thirsting. Not many modern-day apostles in America are poorly clothed. Uh, they're certainly not beaten and homeless. And we labour working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we endure. Uh, so uh, the Apostle Paul says that uh, he labours. He, he used to, uh, they call him a tent maker, but... Uh, the actual uh, talith or the thing that goes on a Jewish man's head 
uh, that holy sort of thing they wear in the head. Uh, that that was uh, what Paul used to do. He used to make them for people. So they must have been very exclusive ones being made by the Apostle Paul. Imagine being living here today and having one that was made by the Apostle Paul. So when Paul said, and we labour working with our own hands, he's I, I feel that he's talking about uh, that uh, he actually laboured, he actually did labour and work to raise his finances for ministry. Being reviled, uh, he had a bad reputation. He, he was spoken against. People spoke out against him. Uh, when people spoke out against him, he blessed. Uh, being persecuted, uh, he was persecuted uh, for his message. Uh, but uh, he said uh, when he was persecuted that he endured. Uh, when people spoke out against his name and his character, being defamed, we entreat. Uh, in other words, uh, we uh, make peace with the people that defame us. Uh, we we uh, go to an effort uh, when... when uh, our name is defamed. Uh, we go to an effort to restore our name. We entreat people. We uh, try to win people back uh, to our side uh, when we've been defeated. We've been made the filth of the world. And how many uh, modern day apostles do you know uh, that have been made the filth of the world, the, the off scouring of things until now? So uh, uh, verse 14, he says, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you may have had 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So Paul was saying that uh, I didn't write these things to bring you shame but to warn you this is what the calling of an apostle is uh, don't uh, be quick to be promoted by men and have uh, hands laid on you for you uh, to become an apostle uh, be warned I'm writing this as a warning and uh, you may have heard 10,000 different teachers and preachers uh, but uh, you don't have ten thousand. You don't have ten thousand fathers, and I've uh, begotten you as a son. <coughs> I've made you a son of mine. I've brought you up. I gave birth to your faith, and uh, respect me for that. So I think that uh, we can all learn from that. Uh, uh, the the modern uh, day apostle. Uh, goes through uh, trials and tribulations. Uh, uh, there's uh, many modern-day apostles that uh, have to uh, wage war and battle uh, all the time with the spirit of pride. Uh, many modern-day apostles uh, battle uh, with uh, a proud and haughty spirit, and uh, this can uh, can disqualify them. Um, I've heard that apostles uh, fight the spirit of pride and uh, and prophets uh, fight the spirit of Jezebel. And uh, I uh, see some truth in that because I've encountered Jezebel a lot. And um, Paul said uh, because he was uh, called up into the third heaven and he saw and heard things uh, that uh, were uh, he couldn't repeat like revelation uh, that he couldn't repeat. Uh, he was sent a messenger from Satan to buffet him. And uh, that messenger from Satan was a spirit that used to travel around wherever Paul went and uh, used to stir up trouble and had him uh, whipped and beaten and beaten with rods and was consistently stirring up trouble. And Paul could discern uh, that, uh, there was a spirit that was causing this, and uh, he asked his spiritual warfare couldn't get rid of it. it. 
seemed like more of a principality or something, something uh, that could move out of its territory. And uh, he uh, uh, discerned that uh, there was a spirit involved and he went to the Lord because his spiritual warfare wasn't working and he went to the Lord to ask him to uh, do something about this spirit. And uh, the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Um, my, I'm glorified in your weakness. And uh, so the Apostle Paul was uh, given that uh, to uh, keep him from pride. And so he was beaten with rods a number of times and whipped and stoned. And he had all this persecution in his life uh, to keep him from being puffed up and to keep him uh, from pride. And I have to admit that um, I, I don't particularly uh, like uh, the a book of Hebrews that I believe Paul wrote, and I don't particularly understand uh, much of Romans, which uh, Paul wrote. And uh, so there's certain things, certain revelations, certain teachings that Paul has uh, that I am uh, not uh, entirely happy with and uh, can actually discern and understand, really. Uh, so... Uh, I, I could uh, be uh, it's sort of like a humble thing for me to admit that uh, that uh, there's certain parts of Paul that are hard to understand. Uh, the Apostle Peter in Second Peter said Paul wrote many things that were hard to do, uh, understand and uh, some men will take those teachings and twist them and deceive many. Uh, so I agree with Peter that Paul has written some things that are hard to understand. So um, understand this, that Paul had those difficulties come in his life that that spirit uh, caused uh, to happen, uh, that uh, spirit uh, that uh, uh, buffeted him, that people call a disease. They, they call the thorn in the flesh a disease. Uh, Kat Kerr, I think, has said that that was uh, short-sightedness or he couldn't see properly. Uh, she uh, discerned that his uh, thorn in the flesh was that he couldn't see. And uh, 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 But uh, that's not true. I heard it from Paul himself when I was talking to him, when I interviewed him, uh, that uh, his thorn in the flesh was this spirit that used to travel around and cause him trouble. So I pray that uh, you're encouraged by this. Uh, please uh, uh, be encouraged that, uh, that uh, uh, we can thank God uh, that uh, you can uh, be a modern day apostle and uh, not uh, not suffer like uh, Paul suffered. Um, and uh, you can uh, be a modern day apostle and not be homeless and you can have food and clothing, uh, but uh, you'll find that certain people persecute you and certain people come against you and speak out against you. Certain people will call you a fool. Certain people will say you're deceived. Uh, as uh, we, we just don't hear from the apostles. We just don't uh, hear them being frank. There's not a lot of uh, people preaching these days that uh, give examples out of their own life and uh, are transparent uh, in their teaching, uh, but you could uh, actually have a sit down a conversation with a modern apostle who's a true apostle, and uh, uh, he could confess to you that he's been attacked so many times and defamed so many times, and he's he's had sicknesses in his body. He's been weak at times. Uh, he's felt. Uh, that uh, he he was a fool. He's been told he's a fool. He's he's gone through periods where he believes he was deceived. He's gone through uh, periods where he thinks he's crazy and his revelations weren't of God. And uh, if you if we actually had the chance to uh, speak to notable apostles who are true apostles, we'd find that they suffer. And uh, so uh, maybe the message here is um, revere the apostles that you know are true apostles and respect them. And perhaps you could even uh, sow into their ministry or if you're friends of theirs on Facebook, 
uh, you could take the time to write good comments on their posts and encourage them and lift them up. I, I think that anyone uh, walking in that office could do with some encouragement. And uh, you can uh, never uh, disregard uh, how important uh, feedback and encouragement is to people. And uh, and I know myself, I, I particularly get encouraged uh, by the reviews that are written on my books on Amazon. I get particularly encouraged by people's uh, good feedback on my teachings. I hope uh, that uh, this uh, teaching uh, encouraged you and showed you uh, the true life that the Apostle Paul had, it wasn't an easy one. And uh, um, because of uh, his teaching and as I've been reading his teaching, I've really come to respect and revere him. And uh, I hope that uh, today's teaching showed you that he didn't really have an easy life. God bless.